Matter exists in three common states, gas, liquid, and solid. In this chapter, we will look at some of the properties of these three states. It helps us to understand matter in terms of its properties when we look at its molecule, at, at, look at it at the molecular level. Whether a substance exists as a gas, a liquid, or solid depends on the balance between the kinetic energy or the motion movement of the particles and the strength of the interactions between them. In a gas, the kinetic energy of motion is high and the particles are far apart from each other. As a result, the attractive forces between the molecules are negligible. Gas molecules move freely. In a liquid, the attractive forces hold molecules much more closely together. So the distance between the molecules and the kinetic energy is much less than a, than a gas. And in a solid, the attractive forces between the molecules are even stronger. So the distance between the individual particles is small and there is little freedom of motion. Here's a summary of some of the properties. Gas molecule, gas. Particles are very far apart and they move rapidly and independently, independent, because the attractions are negligible. As a result, both the volume and the shape are the same as the container. So a gas will uh, expand to fill its container. Now liquids, on the other hand, when we think about liquids, just imagine, for example, I always find it helpful to think about uh, water. So gas would be water vapor, and now we have liquid water. The particles are closer together, and they can still move around, but it's disorganized, and we see that liquids flow. The, they do have some attractions. As the particles become closer together, the attractive forces have a greater impact. Now the volume is fixed. It has a fixed volume. The volume of a liquid will not change. I think about it when I bake a cake. So if I have a half a cup of oil that I add to a cake, when I pour it into a larger container, the volume does not fill up the container. Instead, it stays at a half a cup. That's a fixed volume. But yet, because the molecules can move, the, the liquid will take on the shape of the container. So both gases and liquids have a shape that, that would be the same as the container. Now think about a solid. Perhaps you're thinking about, if we're thinking about a, a gas, I mean, sorry, water, you're thinking about ice. So when you have a solid, the particles are close to each other. Because they're so close, the attractive forces are strong. And there's little freedom of motion, meaning they're held, they're very organized and the particles are held uh, closely together. As a result, solids have both a fixed volume, the amount of space that they will take up will not change, and they have a fixed shape. They will not take on the shape of whatever container that you put in. So like, ga like liquids, both um, liquids and solids have a fixed volume. So in summary, if we think about it, remember gases expand to fill their container. They're randomly arranged, disorganized, and the particles are very far apart. They're moving very quickly, which makes the interactions between them negligible. Liquids have a fixed volume and take on the shape of the container that it's in. The molecules or particles are randomly arranged, but they are closer together. There's some particle movement and they can still flow past one another, but the interactions between them or the attractions between them are, very, are strong. A solid has a definite shape and a definite volume. They have a fixed arrangement and the particles are held very closely together. There is very little motion and, if it, very little motion, and so the movement is very slow and the attractive forces are very strong. As we discuss each gas, liquid, and solid throughout these different videos, keep in mind some of these ideas and, and properties of how the particles are interacting with each other. It will help you understand some of the other things in the chapter a little bit better.